Hey everybody, this is Mr. Storm, and in this project, we're going to create a game called Stevio Brothers. Stevio Brothers, not Mario Brothers, Stevio Brothers. Now, uh, we have a lot to do, so I've already created my project, and ooh, let's move me out of the way, because I'm a little bit in the way, and let's shrink me down a little bit. There we go, that's better. Okay, so I've already created my project, and I've imported my assets. So let's take a look. We have some sprites here. Uh, notice that these are all completely original sprites. You've never seen anything that looks like this before. Um, and I have some scripts, which we only have two scripts for this game. All right. Um, now, don't expect this to be a full two, uh, 2D platformer game. This is really just going to be kind of a prototype for a 2D platformer game and really focused on the main character. Um, but we need a level for that character to exist in. So we're going to create a new level. Um, first of all, let's set up our sprites properly. So I'm going to set all of our sprites to a pixels per unit value of 32. Uh, and I will turn on the, or turn off the filter and hit apply. Okay, so now they're all resized properly. Now, what we want to do is we want to create a tile map. Um, because the way the game is going to be developed is we have these blocks here. And we're going to use these blocks to make up the entire level. So I'm going to right click in the hierarchy, go to 2D object and select tile map. And that's going to create a grid on our game here that we can start adding some objects into. Now, in order to create a new tile map, we need a, or in order to use the tile map, we need a tile palette. Notice I have my tile palette menu down here. I've nested it right in there just to get ready. If you don't have it, you want to go to Window, 2D, Tile Palette, and that will create a tile palette menu, which you can just kind of select or move down here. So we need to populate this tile palette with some objects. So I'm going to select blocks here, and I want to set it to be multiple on the sprite mode. I'm going to click the sprite editor. And in here, my slice, my automatic, watch what happens when I try to automatically slice it like I did last time. It actually doesn't recognize the space between the pixels because there is no space. So what we actually need to do is set this not automatic, but grid by cell size. And we need to set them by 32 on the Y and 32 on the X and click slice. And now it perfectly slices my blocks exactly how I want them. So I'm going to click apply there. Now I want to individually bring in these, these sprites here uh, into my tile palette. Oh, hold on a second. Oh, I need to create a tile palette first. Let's do that. So I'm going to click new tile palette or create a tile palette. I will call this level one and I will click create. This is going to ask me to create a tile palette in my sprites folder. I actually want to create a new folder called tile palettes and I'm going to save it into there. So I'll select that folder. And now for my level one tile palette, I can bring in, just click in or just drag in my, my artwork. And when I do, it's going to ask me to create an asset. I'm going to put that asset in the tile palettes folder. All right. And I'll just do that for each of these objects. Perfect. Okay, so now we have our tile palette. Now this is going to allow us to basically create a level for our video game. I'm going to use this block right here. I'm going to select it and make sure I have the brush selected. And when I do, I can go to my, where's my, why can I not see? Oh, I need to focus on The grid, maybe? What is going on here? This is not working properly. Hold on just one second. Let me pause it. 
Okay, so I noticed what happened. I was zoomed way too far out in order for uh, to, to determine anything at all about what I was doing. Okay, so now that I have my brush working, I don't. I still don't know why my grid's not showing up, but ah, there we go. <laughs> um, all right, so now that that's working, I can just start drawing in my level, and it's really just as easy as just clicking and dragging. Um, let's see. Let's go a little bit farther than that. That looks good. I'm going to create, let's make kind of like a pyramid thing here. All right, let's make some blocks to jump on with one of these blocks in the middle. We'll make you know some of these up top. Okay, that looks good. All right, just kind of play around and build a level that looks good to you. Okay, now I have my tile map completely created, but I actually need a collider around all of this stuff. So I'm going to click add component and I actually want to type, let's see, let's type collider. So what I'm looking for is this tile map collider 2D. Now notice it creates a collider around everything in my game. That's great. That's what I want. But I will tell you that just from experience, if we want to run smoothly along the floor here, it's always best to add another box collider. And um, let's edit that down. And really just have it run just like right above the tile map collider on the floor. That'll just make it a little smoother and easier for us to run on. And we won't get caught in these jagged areas. Okay, the other thing I wanna do is with this tile map collider, the way our script is gonna be set up, um, our character will be able to jump and then just kind of stick onto the wall. That's interesting if we want to do some kind of like wall jumping mechanism, but for this game we don't. It's actually going to cause bugs in our game if we keep it like that. So to fix that, we're going to use something that we've done before. Let's go to assets. Let's create a new folder. Let's call this materials. We're going to create a physics material 2D. So create physics material 2D. We'll call this walls. And let's change the friction to zero. For some weird reason, by default, physics materials have a default of like 0 0.4 on the friction. We want a zero friction. That way, our character hits the wall and just slides down. Okay, so I'm going to select my tile map. I'm going to drag this, excuse me, over into, oh, where to go? The tile map collider 2D material section. Okay, so now our level's basically built. Let's go to our main camera. That looks a bit gross because the background color isn't great. Um, Stevie O Brothers wants a nice light blue background color. Yeah, let's do that. A little darker maybe. Okay, good, good, good. Alrighty, and let's change. So your camera might be a little different from mine, um, but that's okay. Let's just... You can adjust your camera settings, I guess, to make it look better. All right, all right, we're good there. I'm fine. We're gonna fix the camera later anyway because we're gonna do all kinds of changes to our camera. Why is it so big? Hmm, that's weird. I think it's because it's set to maybe perspective. Yeah, it's because it was a perspective camera, not an orthographic camera. Okay, sorry. Okay, so now we have our level built. Let's go ahead and bring in our main character. Let's go to this, actually no, let's, let's do the rest of the level details. So we have our hills here. Oh, I don't wanna keep the, I don't wanna have this still selected. All right, let's bring in hills. Let's add some hills in. That looks good. Let's add a pipe right here. Perfect. Now the clouds and bushes, this is multiple. Let's actually set it to multiple. And let's splice this up using automatic. All right. So notice I have some clouds here and bushes. So we'll hit apply there. Put some clouds in here. 
throughout the game, throughout the level, and we'll put some bushes in here as well. Kind of just kind of sprinkle them in. All right. So I'm not going to spend too much time designing. That looks pretty good. Now the flag here, the flag has two states. Now my original intention was to animate the flag so that it looked like the flag was was waving, but it's off by a little bit of pick by like a couple pixels. So it kind of jumps back and forth when it animates. So I'm actually just going to set this to multiple, apply, and slice it automatic, slice, hit apply. And I'm just going to bring out one of these flags and just put it at the end. Now that's very, very tiny. Let's scale it up three by three. And let's move it where we want it to go in the game. That doesn't look perfect, but it's, it's good enough for what we're looking for. Now we want to set in some barriers. Let's create a, an empty object. And let's call this, oh, hello rename let's call it left barrier and let's add a box collider 2d let's edit it and bring her over here and let's make sure it's pretty tall our character is going to be able to jump pretty high so I want to make sure that I don't let's duplicate that rename right barrier and we will edit the right barrier so it goes all the way over here okay perfect so now we have a level now the level works it's exactly what we want it looks good um, it's not a lot and there's no enemies and we're not going to be able to actually hit the bricks and do anything, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, all right, let's get into creating our character finally. So we have Stevio here. Let's set him to multiple and let's splice him up or slice him up. Automatic slice. Okay. And hit apply. So here's the way Stevio works. Um, let me move my face here real quick so we can, we can look at them. Here's the way Stevio works. These first two frames are the idle animation. So let's select those and bring that out and pop them in right there in our game. Now in here, we want to create a new folder called animations. And in there, we want to call this idle because we're going to create an idle animation for Stevio. The next three frames, so Stevio 2, 3, and 4, so let's select those. I'm going to hold Control, click, and click. These three frames make up the run animation. So I'm going to add this in here, type run. And then the last two frames, which are literally exactly the same, are going to make up our jump animation. Now the reason why I added two different sprites that are the exact same sprite is because uh, you know, dragging two frames in automatically creates an animation and I wanted that to happen. I didn't want to have to go through the process of trying to create an animation state from a single frame. Uh, it's just easier to do it this way. Okay, so now that we have our animations built, we can delete Stevio 2 and Stevio 5. Let's go into our animations folder. We can also delete the animator controller for Stevio 2 and the animator controller for Stevio 5. All right, now let's open up the animator controller here and let's take a look at what we want to do. Ooh, let me move my face back to the middle here. Let's take a look at how we want to modify this animator controller. Let's bring our exit state over here. Okay, so we have three animations. We have idle, we have jump, and we have run. Let's bring jump out, and let's bring run out. Okay, now, we want to be able to move from idle to run. We want to be able to move from run to jump, from idle to jump. So we have a lot of combinations of jumping and running that we want to check for. So we need to create a couple of parameters. We're going to create one parameter. Uh, it's going to be a Boolean parameter, and we're going to call it is running just like that lowercase is k 
capital R, running, right? So is running, we're gonna create another Boolean parameter called is jumping, okay? Now, depending on if we are running or jumping, we're gonna change from state to state. So let's create a transition from idle to run. Let's change, let's make sure it doesn't have exit time. And let's set the conditions to is running true. Let's change, let's make a transition uh, back from running, from run to idle, turn off has exit time, and set is running to false. So when we're not running, we want it to be false. So if we're in the run state and we and running turns to false, we wanna go back to idle. Okay, now from idle to jump, we want that to happen as well because we don't wanna have to be running in order to jump, we wanna be able to jump anytime. So we're gonna uncheck has, e has exit time. We're going to say is jumping true. Now we want to uh, state back from jump to idle, turn off has exit time, and say is jumping false. Okay, so that's pretty easy. So we can go from idle to jump and from idle to run and back again. Now we need to figure out if I'm running, should I be able to run and then immediately jump? Well, I think so. I think that makes it a lot smoother. So let's make a transition from run to jump. And let's uncheck has exit time. Now, the temptation here is gonna be, well, let's set two conditions. One is running true and then jump, but we don't need to because we're already running. So we know running is true. So we can actually just change this to is jumping true. And then when we come back down, jump, we're already in the jump state. We have a transition that checks to see if jumping is false. If it is, we go back to idle. If we set is jumping to false to go back to run, it's gonna be confused. If we're jumping and is running then turns false, it doesn't know which way to choose. So we need to set this a little bit more explicitly. We need to say, uh, first uncheck uh, run time or exit time. We need to set is jumping false and also if is running is true. That way, if jumping is false and running is false, we go back to idle, but if jumping is false and running is true, then we go to run. That's pretty much our entire animator controller for our main character. All right, let's go back to the scene view and let's click on Stevio and let's actually finish setting this guy up so we can play around and actually see what our game looks like. Okay, so Stevio is going to need a box collider 2D. Um, he is going to need a, let's see, a rigid body 2D. Now, normally, pretty much every time we've added a rigid body, we've turned off the gravity scale. For Stevio, we're not going to do that. We're going to leave the gravity on because our script is going to use gravity to have him, you know, kind of come back down to ground. So we're gonna leave gravity on, but we are gonna freeze the rotation here. Um, and then we need a script. So let's take a look at our scripts. So we have a player controller script. Let's drag that in. Now we have a lot of options here. So we have move speed, sliding, and jump force. Move speed is obviously how fast is Stevio going to move. Sliding is when I'm done moving, how much of a slide do we want to give him so he doesn't stop immediately on a dime because that's really unnatural. And this is actually a slider. We can slide it back and forth. And then we have jump force. How high is he going to jump? Okay, let's go ahead and play the game and see if it actually works. All right, so we notice that we have our, our Stevio animation is going. Our idle animation is going. It's maybe a bit fast. We can probably tweak it. He runs. He runs pretty fast, actually. Let's try a jump. Oh, gosh. He jumps very high. Okay, so there are two things. That, there are a lot of things we need to change. Okay. First, let's change the move speed down to five. Let's change the sliding down a little bit. The jump force I'm going to leave alone. I actually want to increase the gravity scale. Let's try increasing it to 50. Okay, that's a little bit not great. Let's change it to 10, and let's try that. 
Okay, that feels better. But it's kind of making me run slowly. Let's try 15? No. Let's try 5. Okay, that feels better. But it's not... I mean, maybe my move speed needs to go up. Let's try 10. Now notice that I'm changing this while I'm playing the game, which is exactly what I want to do because I want to be able to kind of fine tune it in real time. Um, but when I uncheck play, all of these are going to revert back to their normal attributes. So I want to remember that I have gravity scale set to five and move speed set to 10, and I have the slide down to about five. Uh, let's make it a little bit more. Oh, I need to click on. Now notice that my animations are working already, which is exactly what I'm looking for. And when I jump, it changes to the jump animation. Kind of. Sometimes it does. Hmm. Oh, wow. That was crazy. Okay. So uh, let's change the gravity scale to 5. Move speed to... Uh, did I have it at 10? I believe I did. Okay. So now it's working. The problem is we have variable tracking target of camera controller has not been assigned. Oh, did I? Oh, <laughs> I added the camera controller script uh, when I was paused on accident and I didn't, uh, I, I forgot to tell you. So we have this camera controller script object. You want to add that camera controller script into the camera controller or into the camera. What this is going to allow us to do is set it up so that our camera will follow our main character and but it'll give it a little bit of a, a kind of a offset a weird you know follow speed and we can set a minimum position and a maximum position on the x and y or on the x so what i'm going to do is i'm going to set stevio as the tracking target i'm going to move my camera over to the the farthest left position i want it to be which is there, which is negative 0.43. I'm going to set that as my minimum position, negative 0.43. Okay, now my maximum position, I want to move it all the way over to the maximum position in the game, which is there. I don't want it to go any further than that. So that's 20.43. So I'm going to set my maximum to 20.43. Okay, perfect. Now I want to move my camera back so that it looks... So it starts on my character here. And well, let's kind of start them right there. That looks like a good starting sp spot for my camera. We can set an offset. The offset will basically move the camera over a little bit when we're playing. I have mine set to five. And you can change the follow speed. The follow speed on mine is set to 1.5. And then you can change whether or not the Y axis is locked. We want the Y axis locked. Because if it's not, then when your character jumps, the camera's going to follow it and it's going to not look great. So I have the Y axis set to locked. And at this point, the game is essentially working perfectly. I'm going to go ahead and play and make sure our camera is following the character, which he is. And I can go through and play the entire level. All right. Now, when I get here, it's impossible for me to get back over, but that's okay. I can play again and play around without having a all right, so notice I can't go any further than there. Oh, I didn't add the physics material to my barriers. So let's select both of the, bar the barriers and add the physics material there. That way I don't stick to the wall, I can slide down. Okay, perfect. Okay, it looks like Stevio Brothers is basically done. Uh, it feels pretty natural to play. Now there are some glitches here. Um, for example, I forgot to add a box collider to the pipe here, but that's okay. Um, if I jump at a specific point and I'm able to clip, you can actually clip through the bricks here. Um, and if you jump from too high up, or if you have your speed set to a different thing, you can actually clip through the ground. Anyway, there are a ton of like glitches with this, but really what we're trying to do is make sure we can change the animation states as we're running and jump we want to be able to jump and we want to be able to like you know interact with the game itself 
Okay, perfect. Uh, once your game looks like mine, uh, you're you're pretty much done. All right. Um, and you can add, you can make your level much bigger if you want. You can add all kinds of crazy stuff to it. Um, but once it's essentially working like this, then you're good to go. Um, and I will see you in the next week. Peace.